Hi everybody, it's James at dreamweavertutorial.co.uk. This is an infinite carousel. It's a jQuery plugin carousel which can display images and headlines for links to pages in your website. Now the carousel doesn't look like this when you first install it, but I'll show you how to customize it how you want to and get it looking great on your website. Now the images rotate on a timer, which I'll show you how to adjust. There are buttons which let you forward or reverse to the next image. You'll also notice that the buttons animate to a full opacity. They can also be set to auto hide and reappear on the hover. There is a pause button at the top right hand corner and you can lower or minimize the overlay. Okay, now the carousel here is using some buttons that I designed and are available for a free download with the carousel plugin. I'll also show you how to add your own buttons as well as customize it to suit your website. But special thanks to catchmyfame.com who provided the jQuery carousel plugin. So go along to their website. I'll leave a link for you below the video. Now, when you download the file, um, you'll see some script hooks, some Lauren Ipsum text. There's a folder called JS which contains the infinite carousel plugin. Now, here, here are two scripts you've got the minimized version and the full version, production version and inside that are some images. Now you've got the play and pause button, you've got the original left and right buttons and the caption buttons. Now I provided these buttons here and these buttons here which are designed in fireworks. Okay, there's also the images folder which contains all the carousel images that we can use for this demonstration and an empty CSS folder. Okay, now the best thing to do is to find this in a new site. I'm going to call mine Carousel because that's the name of the folder that contains the Carousel plugin. Um, now it's best to define a new site for this plugin so that then once you've got it up and running you can then put it into your website design from there. Okay, so I've just defined the local root folder as Carousel and the images folder. Uh, which is inside, just inside the carousel folder there. Now if you've done everything correctly you should have what I have in my local files panel and I've got Laura Mips and text, the script hooks, all of the jQuery plugin files and the images and uh, the carousel images that we will use for the demonstration as well as an empty CSS folder. Also if you click on the assets panel you'll be able to see all the images that are included there to make sure you've got everything correctly. Okay, so I'm going to create a new file. It will be a, a HTML document, a 1.0 transitional. Press create. And as usual, I'm going to start hand coding. We'll split the tags, go inside the body, and I'm going to create a div with an ID. Now it's going to be called carousel, which is what the script files hook onto. So it's div ID equals carousel. Now inside of this carousel div we need to place an unordered list and inside the unordered list each list item we create will contain an image and a paragraph tag for a short description to accompany that image. And what we're going to do is create an image placeholder so I'm going to name the dimensions which is a stipulation for this carousel to hook onto and uh, we're going to name the dimensions, the height and width and then we're going to use the point to file icon and we're going to click inside the placeholder image and link it to the images in our files panel. So the images in question that we're using for this tutorial are width 950 pixels and a height of 300 pixels and I'll close that tag off there and click refresh and you'll see inside of design view we've got our placeholder image. Okay, so I'm now going to create a paragraph tag and uh, inside the files panel you'll notice that there's a file called laurenipsum.txt. If you double click and open that and copy and paste the laurenipsum text into that paragraph and then we are going to duplicate this placeholder, this li tag with the image placeholder and the paragraph another six times because we have seven images in total. So again, demonstrating one of the time saving abilities of Dreamweaver, we are going to copy the li tag and all of its contents. We're going to press control V and paste it six more times into our design to create those placeholders which are just ready for us to link up with our points file icon. Okay, so there they are in design view. Let's create a new CSS rule. I'm going to click on the div ID carousel. I'm going to click on the new CSS rule button and we're going to define a new style sheet for div ID carousel. Press OK 
and I'm going to save that into the empty CSS folder you should have got with the download. And I'm going to call that CSS Carousel and click the Save button. And just beside the source code, I'm going to click on that button there, CSS Carousel.css, and there's the ruler I created. Now what I'd like to do is float all of the placeholder images to the left so they're, they're not going to be stacking on top of each other anymore and they'll be side by side. So I'm going to add a width to the div carousel and I'm going to give it a width of 8000 pixels which is more than enough for the images we have. I'm going to create a new selector for the unordered list and I'm going to take the list style out. So I'm going to type in list dash style colon none. That takes all the styling out of the unordered list that's fantastic. Okay I'm also going to set the width on the unordered list to 8000 pixels to match the div carousel. I'm going to set the margin to 0 and the padding to 0 also. Okay so we need to set the position of the unordered list to relative and that's necessary for the script to manipulate the unordered list to create the carousel effect. Okay, so let's create a new selector for the li tags, the list item tags now. So that'll be pound, carousel, li, and the open and closing curly braces. Okay, so here we're going to set the display of the list item tags to inline. So display, colon, inline, and a semicolon. And then we're going to set them to float to the left and allow them to ride up side by side. And uh, because we've set the div to a width of 8000 pixels it should be more than enough room so if we use a scroll bar now and scroll along you can see that we're starting to get our carousel effect there okay and here we are with our paragraph our descriptions underneath there all ready to be hooked up to our images and we'll be using the points file icon to do that Okay, so I'm going to click inside the placeholder image. I'm going to click on the point to file icon for the source and I'm going to drag it over to our the first image. Click inside the second placeholder and click and drag with the point to file icon over to all the images uh, inside of the files panel. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get this animated inside of this page and then we're going to create an iframe on another page and reference this carousel. And the benefits of doing that are that it makes the carousel and the images and the descriptions very easy to update. So if you keep them all in one place in one folder and then you can change out the images, the descriptions, add the links, whatever you need to do and it makes it very very easy to update. Okay, so let's take a couple of minutes to preview this in a browser. I'm going to preview this in Firefox, make sure you've saved all the changes. Okay, so here we go. Here's our images all lined up. Um, there's a slight gap at the very top there that I've noticed, so we need to close that gap off. But they're es essentially they're in position where they should be and they're all side by side. Okay, so the top gap there is a little bit of white space and a little bit to the left. We just need to add a margin attribute to the body tag. So I'm going to create a body tag now and it's going to target the body. So body, open and close curly braces, margin colon zero and that should take care of the problem. Now if you press refresh you'll see that already updates in design view and I'll preview that in Firefox to see that it's okay and there we go there's no white space uh, between the browser and the image okay so let's go into our source code now and what we need to do is start setting up the script hooks so we'll go into the head of the document create a space just below the CSS file that we created and we'll start adding our script hooks now so if you go to the script hooks.txt file copy and paste the script hooks inside of the head like so. Now the first script hook is linking to Google's version of the jQuery library. It's a very stable version. The second one is linking to the carousel and here is the script call. This calls a function, it calls the carousel div and applies the infinite carousel uh, animation to it. Okay, so let's preview that in Firefox and here is the carousel with its default functionality. We still need to apply and attach the buttons to it, plus we're going to make quite a few changes to customize it and I'll show you exactly how to customize it to suit your web design. So make sure you join me in part two, there'll be a link below the video for part two and I hope to see you there.